Sleep moves in Pokemon have always been a bit of a controversial topic. The ability to totally incapacitate a Pokemon for 1-4 to four turns has always been one of the most powerful strategies in the game, and perhaps now it's even become a little too powerful. The OU Council for Smogon Competitive Singles has brought up discussion about potentially banning sleep moves, as they believe that sleep might be too overpowered in the current metagame. Whether this is due to Darkrai's recent hypnosis shenanigans due to its unban, or just all-around uncompetitive strategies to face, such as Hypnosis Iron Valiant or Ninetales Alola, it's not far-fetched to think that sleep might be banned from Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. So, let's take a deeper dive and discuss. Alright guys, so let's get right into it. I have this post from one of the members from the Smogon OU Council, so this is basically them talking about how they want to take a look at sleep and how sleep clause is not really a proper mod in the first place for the game so you can see that they have a couple of pokemon sprites here to discuss as abusers of sleep moves i'm going to talk about dark ride first because in my opinion that is the most pressing issue when it comes to the whole sleep discussion so reading through this our newest edition dark ride sometimes run hypnosis blah 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 pretty much built around sleep as a mechanic i would agree with that um yeah so basically I'm going to just start off with Dark Rite right off the rip if we're talking about sleep. Is sleep broken in the metagame? I personally believe Dark Rite is the most pressing issues. Looking at these Pokemon right here as the most common sleep setters in the tier, Dark Rite is the most annoying for me, and then Alolan Ninetales is absolutely the second most annoying, because I've always found that Ninetales is pretty fast with 109 base speed, right? So it doesn't have a lot of trouble putting up Aurora Veil. And once Ninetales is able to put up that Aurora Veil and get 2x defenses on both sides, it becomes very easy for it to just keep on clicking Hypnosis because if it has these boosted defenses, well, Hypnosis is pretty much risk-free because you can't kill it anyways and it's quite fast. Anyways, let's talk about Darkrai. So the most annoying part about Darkrai, in my opinion, is the fact that it is currently running this Hypnosis Focus Sash Nasty Plot set. This set is very, very difficult to beat. In the current metagame because it is risk free as a whole i know i made a video talking about how dark Rye has fallen off and all that but this set this set might be the one this is quite a frustrating set so it's just low opportunity cost if you lead off with something like this the speed stat is very high you're most likely to be faster than 90 percent of the pokemon in the field that gives you two chances to hit your hypnosis hypnosis is not affected by sucker punch or thunderclap as you guys know so it's not like you can priority past those you would need something like a stream speed bullet punch mock punch if you wanted to get past dark rise focus sash so when you have a pokemon like this that basically gets a chance to fire off two hypnosises the chance of missing two hypnosises is i believe 16 percent meaning you have an 84% chance of hitting two Hypnosis. Like we said, Darkrai is faster than 90% of the Pokemon in the field, so if it hits the Hypnosis off the rip, your Pokemon is down right there, it's now lost 12.5% to Bad Dreams, and you have this inconsistent Pokemon in front of you, Darkrai, that is spamming Hypnosis 60% of the time, your Pokemon goes to sleep, and now this Pokemon is in front of you, free to set up and do whatever. I think Darkrai is the most pressing issue with this move, because of its ability, and I think Sash Darkrai is just very very cheap leftovers boots life orb scarf all of that is secondary in my opinion to focus sash i do think dark is a great pokemon however i think if you removed hypnosis from dark Rise kit this thing for sure would not be anything too crazy and while i was playing in the beginning stages of this metagame i did not think dark Rye was too overpowered however i have now come around and seen that this hypnosis set is just plain uncompetitive in my opinion it leads off most of the time. I mean, you can bring it in if you keep rocks off. I think Sash is for sure the best. That's what I've uh, come to the realization of as well. This isn't my team. Shout out to my boy Vertex. He made this and passed me. I was climbing the high ladder with this very easy. Um, but yeah, you got this Focus Sash Dark Rye. You get the opportunity to lead off Hypnosis. I can actually show you guys a replay of this in which this is where I was like, okay, this might be kind of OP. Hold on, let me show you. All right, so this was from a tournament yesterday. This is my buddy Lax. He's using the same team. I want you to take a look at what this Dark Rye does in this game. Hold on, let me put this down to normal really quick. So turn one, sleeps the Tinglu, right? We get right to it. Nasty plot immediately. Tinglu stays asleep. All right, another another turn of chip. We see the ice beam come out here, kills the Tinglu, gets a crit, which I guess is definitely definitely matters. We see this thing come in. It wins the speed tie, triple axle, brings it down to 20%, hits hypnosis again, puts the thing to sleep. We see switch out into Toxapex on the Dark Pulse, takes 52%, and then at this point the Toxapex turns into a Fairy type to stop getting fully swept by Darkrai. But, as you can see, it goes for Haze rather than killing with Surf, maybe it didn't have Haze, and this Darkrai is free to get off, what, a dead Tinglu, a sleeping Weavile, exhausted the Terrastalize on Pex and brought it to now 56% when it comes back with the regen, 
and it's made gouging fire reveal that it's not booster energy and also take 26 percent your lead cannot do all of this because of a 60 percent chance to do it i find that to be way way too crazy uncompetitive just it doesn't give you something to plan for so this is why i have to go back on what i said about dark a few weeks ago when i said that dark rise washed yes if you're using it very narrowly as this just nasty plus sweeper or boots or whatever it will feel washed at times but after using hypnosis i do think that this is the most annoying pressing issue so if you were to ask me right now what do you think should they ban uh sleep moves i would say first i want to take a look at dark eye and hypnosis because that is the big issue to me anyways let's go back to this post uh because it is a good post and i want to discuss the other parts of it so they did have something right here. Why not Darkrai? We have a few reasons. So let's look at the reasoning. Darkrai is certainly moving the needle here, but we have seen enough examples of this throughout the generation. Okay. Sleep's layers of RNG. Between 1 verse 2 verse 3 turn sleep and whether or not the moves actually hit to begin with are undesirable regardless of Darkrai's presence. I can agree with that. Uh, sleep is a randomization of when you would wake up. That has nothing to do with Darkrai. The mod we currently use for sleep is unfaithful to cartridge mechanics. We should maybe... We would maybe be okay in an exceptional circumstance to keep the game playable such as the various rby desync patches on sim okay i'm not too familiar with that but we do not necessarily feel that this warrants such a mod that is also a pretty fair point that the sleep mod that we currently play with is kind of bs like nothing like this exists and you also can't recreate it on cartridge uh which is bs too because it's just like oh don't double click the sleep move that has always been a bit of a complaint but yeah so dark Ride, to me is the most annoying part of the sleep as a whole let me talk about Nine Cells Alola next because that is another one that I think is very cheap. So Veil, like I don't have to explain Veil to you guys. You know how much of a nuisance this type of strategy is. Nine Cells has great BST, right? It pulls up with this 109 speed faster than most, gets the automatic physical defense boost due to uh, being an ice type and setting up the hail with its ability, gets up the Aurora Veil, and then you can spam Hypnosis quite free because this Pokemon without a steel move is extremely hard to one-hit KO or even two-hit KO. Uh, once the veil goes up and like we said it's very fast the veil is more than likely going to go up this thing is faster than a lot of pokemon like uh what's it called enamorous you know keldeo stuff like that it doesn't matter so i've always found that this was really uncompetitive because one you're setting up screens which is cheese and then two you're straight up sleeping another month it's like too much is happening and again it's a 60 percent chance but you cannot prep for the 60 percent chance which is why i don't like hypnosis there was a tweet earlier uh that finchinator put out basically discussing this whole uh, discussion about sleep and i tweeted at it and i said that i wish that something could be done about hypnosis rather than sleep moves as a whole because the mods that use hypnosis already have other shit going on that they do which is big cheese like nine tails aurora veiling and then hypnosis is a 60 percent inconsistent thing that you cannot prepare for as the opponent and it's much more low risk for the user of it because they already have their strategy just fish for it so anyways, that's Ninetales next. The only other user hypnosis that I really don't like is Valiant. And Valiant, in my opinion, is the most inconsistent user of this strategy. Did they talk about it in here? Let me see. There were a few popular hypnosis Valiant teams at various points in the metagame. It turned beating it with any non-golden go check into a slightly weighted coin flip. Yeah, I mean, I recorded with this with CTC. If you guys remember, I had Calm Mind Hypnosis and I hit like most of the games. I was taking out Amoonguses and shit. It was very, very cheap when you hit. When you don't hit, it's like, oh my god, I just sacked my booster Val and this is the best Pokemon ever. So, Hypnosis, I don't like that this is a 60% move. I feel like that alone makes it a very cheap coin flip that you cannot prepare for. Now I'll talk about Spore because that's only really seen on Amoongus. Breloom is not used too much in Generation 9. However, Breloom has not fallen off. It is still viable. So, Let's look at Spore right now. All right, Amoongus, Breloom, and then Brute Bonnet is definitely something I can consider, even if it is in NU. This Pokemon is not terrible, all right? I'm not saying it's that good right now, because it's definitely not that good right now, but whatever, it's one of the Spore Pokemon. So Amoongus is the number one Pokemon that gets totally nerfed from a Spore ban. I really do not want this Pokemon to get nerfed, if I'm honest with you. You guys know I'm a dirty Amoongus spammer in every single gen that I'm able to use this Pokemon. Except for Gen 8. I don't even know if it's in Gen 8, but I've never used it in Gen 8. I think it is, but it's ass. Anyways, the point is, I've used this a lot in Generation 9, 7, 6, you guys know the deal, even 5. And even in Generation 5, they banned Spore. I mean, or they banned Sleep Moves because I think Amoongus was probably too pressing. Um, but yeah, let's see what the council had to say about Amoongus. Amoongus did what it usually does for a while, and to some extent it still does that. However, as people realized the power of neutralizing Mons and SV, lead Amoongus was discovered. It'd run red card and just lead, click Spore, and you didn't have much of a choice but to sack something to sleep. 
Red card obviously had the side benefit of being great against booster energy users. That should come as no surprise to you guys. We have used this on so many teams on my vids. I've brought it to tournament in Gen 9 like three times as well this year in like the 12 games I've played because what they said is absolutely true. This thing is an incredible lead. Very hard to one hit KO. You're able to spore a lot of shit. Red card again scares out these booster Pokemon such as Valiant completely messing up their whole strategy. And then if they get the wrong Pokemon sent in, it's done. Like, I've had that situation happen before, where they attack my Amoongus, and then they get dragged out into something like a King Gambit or a Dragonite, and I get the Spore on the Switch. And I'm thinking, holy shit, I just took out their late-game win condition. They did not prepare for this at all. They could not prepare for that at all, because it was, you know, a RNG-based situation where they got pulled into their Pokemon and then Spored. So I've always thought their red card Amoongus was really, really difficult to beat. I'm not saying it's uncounterable. Like, I actually played against red card Amoongus Rain. In tournament and it had a really good matchup versus my team and i knew in the game if i attack into a moongus at any time it's going to switch out via red card bring in barrascuta and kill a pokemon so for that reason i literally played in a way where i did not trigger its red card until the rain wasn't up and with the correct pokemon etc etc but that's a whole diff discussion about red card or whatever that's not a big deal but anyways so 100 sleep on a moongus a moongus always does the same thing i don't want to see this thing get nerfed via a all-around sleep ban because i feel like with this pokemon you know exactly what is about to happen it only uses the same thing every single game which is what hold on let me go to my team builder change the dimensions oh hell no not this hold on okay let me go looking for my amoongus team my last amoongus team all right so this is one i just recorded with recently brass knot sludge bomb clear smog sport you are literally going to see this on every single amoongus you will very rarely see something like stun spore and you will pretty commonly see foul play as well because foul play does check dragonite really well uh for the most part i really like foul play too you can never go wrong with foul play um but you know it obviously depends on the team you have and you know what you need for the rest of your guys however grass knot sludge bomb and spore in my opinion are all necessary i don't like giga drain Grass Knot used to hit Garganical harder, and it also hits Zamazenta harder, which in my opinion is a big deal. So that's why personally I stick with Grass Knot. Depends on your team though. I know CTC sometimes likes Giga Drain. Uh, but yeah, for me, the difference between Spore and Hypnosis is Spore, you always know what's going to happen with this Pokemon. It comes in, it's clicking Spore, it's heavily fucked up by Pokemon like Gliscor and Golden Go. There is nothing Amoongus could ever do in its life to get through those. That is not the same for the other Hypnosis guys I mentioned. All of them are fine versus that. Ninetales is fine versus Gliscor. I guess that's not fine versus uh, Gold, but you're still faster than Gold. And then Valiant and Deoc I mean Valiant and Darkrai absolutely beat both Golden Go and Gliscor, which... I just brought up because those are spore absorbers, sleep absorbers, whatever you want to call them. Um, I do agree that spore can be very annoying when a team does not have an absorber. If you don't have a glass score, you don't have a golden go. It's very annoying. Sometimes Amoongus has even felt like sort of a fishy pick when you bring it to a battle because it's like, oh, I really hope they don't have golden go. But I've never felt like Amoongus is useless just because my opponent has a golden go or a glass score. I can always get something out of it. You always have that red card option too. Although on some teams I've ran boots as well because I didn't have removal. Um, but yeah, that's just my opinion on Amoongus. I don't think Spore is broken on Amoongus at all. I really just think it's Hypnosis. I do agree that Spore as a whole, I mean, not Spore as a whole, but Sleep as a whole is annoying in the current metagame, but I don't believe that Amoongus should be punished. I don't believe that Sleep needs to go. I think it's Hypnosis that's the imbalanced version. Now let's talk about Sleep Powder. Venusaur's new popularity has led to a decent amount of Sleep Powder shenanigans, which is very dangerous considering its threat level. I don't think Venusaur is that good to begin with. It's very slow. Hisuian Lilligant has been fringe in OU since its drop, but its antics on Sun Team's Sleep Powder are incredibly frustrating to play around. Brute Bonnet was pretty much the same thing. All of these were also incredibly threatening to everything that could hope to absorb sleep. Brute Bonnet had its time where it was very decent, which was during the summer metagame of Pokemon, during the first DLC when it came around. There was a really annoying uh, Walking Wake Sun running around, actually. I probably can show you guys what that team looked like, and if you did play Ladder... During the first DLC in the summer, you definitely know exactly which team I'm talking about. Let me find it. It was this right here. Shout out to my boy Vertex. He made this. So I believe this was during the uh, summer World Cup meta. Let me just make sure. Yeah, this is this is around that time because I have random like Sneasler teams and shit. Okay, let me. Yeah, yeah, this is during that time. Okay, so yeah, Brute Bonnet. This is what it used to do on Sun. Obviously, Sun teams have changed now with the introduction of Raging Bolt and all that. But Bullet Seed, Sucker Punch, Crunch, Spore. Very annoying. You used to see close combat sometimes as well, just depending on what the team needs, of course. But this is 90% of the time what you're going to see. Brute Bonnet is pretty good on the defenses. 111, 99, 99 means if it's not super effective, very low chance it's going to one hit KO this. Like, extremely low. Uh, always would take Dragapult, Specs, Draco, U-Turn, all that. It didn't matter. 
And then, yeah, you're able to incapacitate something completely with Spore. Because the switch-ins to this guy would be what? Uh, Gliscor, which is not a switch into this thing at the sun at all. And Gliscor actually came, came around after this thing kind of fell off. But at the time, it was Golden Go, right? That's the main sleep absorber. Golden Go can fuck up Amoongus. It can't fuck up this thing. So this was definitely pretty annoying. Um, Brute Bonnet was a Pokemon that, you know, we didn't even see that much. But on Sun, I remember I always got a lot of work off with this thing. Because if you can't one-hit KO it, it is threatening back with a Spore. And it's not some weak Pokemon. Booster attack plus this much attack is, stat is you know, it's crazy. It looks like it's damn near 500 attack at that point. Uh, let's see. Lilligant. Yeah, I think Lilligant is definitely also worth a shout-out. That Pokemon is pretty damn annoying two let me see sleep powder ctc runs this he runs wide lens chlorophyll sleep powder close combat uh triple axle and then whatever solar blade because he's already running axle and sleep powder and as we all know ctc is an honest battler and will not be going for the hacks you know what remember that but yeah this is definitely pretty annoying on sun because again it's just strong great coverage and then if it can just sleep the pokemon in front of it that it can't kill. Well, now you're in a shitty spot. If you go to your Sloking G or you go to your Corviknight or Skarm thinking, okay, let me check this temporarily, but it just clicks Sleep Powder. Now you're in an RNG-based situation where you're like, oh, if I wake up, I beat this. But if I don't wake up, I'm screwed. And we've all been in those types of situations before where we send out our Pokemon that's counter, but a Sleep Move comes up. Let me bring it up in an easy way to understand. Whenever you see any of these pussies, hold on. Vivalon, Venomoth, I think there's another one that does it, but you guys get the gist. There's a lot, like all those sleep powder, quiver dancing, butterflies. I hate playing those in Ranbats because you know you're about to get spun like it's nobody's business. I think for the most part, that is the Pokemon worth talking about. So let me go back to the post as a whole and let's go over it. So I guess then there's just a discussion from different uh, forum members about what they think. So let me wrap this up now because I think I've talked about it enough and give my overall thoughts. I do think sleep is an annoying mechanic in the game and it is RNG based. I completely agree with that. It's always been controversial. When I first saw that there was discussion about this, I was a bit skeptical because I was like, eh, sleep has always existed. However, I do think the hypnosis strats are really BS. And even in generation eight, Alolan Ninetales used to set up Veil semi-often and it would just spam hypnosis afterwards because it was risk-free. However, we had more Melmetal, Scizor, Cartana, Gy Gyroball, Feral. We had all this shit that like kind of kept nine tails at bay now it's more so like gambit heavy slam uh dog gold stuff like that whatever the point is hypnosis is the issue i have with the current like sleep discussion i think that it, that the fact that it's 60 percent, the fact that it comes on extremely good pokemon that can do a bunch of stuff i hate that it's just a very coin flip style mechanic the opponent is not able to prepare for it as well as the user is because the user is just throwing that shit out and hoping to force a rng based victory i just don't like it it's not competitive if you gave me an option on what I would decide today, I would say just get rid of Dark Rise, dumbass. Because this hypnosis sash shit is not, it's not competitive. It's not healthy. It doesn't do anything good for them. You, like, this is not a skillful way to play the game. And I don't think it's anything shameful. If Dark Rise was retested and seen as broken, the whole point of this game is we should be trying to figure out what the like, premier good metagame is. So if Dark Rise does end up being uh, broken and they decide to ban it via council vote or... It would most likely be a suspect test, rather. But, yeah, I, I think it's hypnosis, though. I wish that a situation in which we could ban hypnosis would happen. However, Smog has really rigid tiering rules, and I think Spore and all sleep moves would just go. But that also brings up an interesting question, right? If we're going to ban all those moves, what about this move right here, Yawn, which is extremely important for a lot of different Pokemon? Hold on. Yawn is not even a normal sleep move for the first... for. The, for the most part, right? This is a two-turn move. This is a move that causes Pokemon to have to switch out, therefore giving your Pokemon an in initiative. I've used Yawn G-King before. I've used Yawn Clawzire before. I've used Yawn Torkoal in so many videos. Yawn Hippo is something I like as well because Hippo cannot even Toxic anymore. Yawn Swampert I used to use in Gen 8 with Flip Turn. So getting rid of Yawn, in my opinion, is actually crazy because that is like a two-turner. That's not even like anything crazy. Like you have a chance to switch, but they would axe all the sleep moves. So that's something that I kind of have an issue with as well. What about Yawn? Anyways, I think this is a very interesting interesting discussion. I don't know where I fall currently. Besides that, I would rather boot Darkrai than end up with a lot of these guys getting cut. 
I also don't mind if hypnosis goes because like I said this shit's cheap I don't like the minds that use it let me know in the comments below what you guys think about this proposal also nothing is set in stone at all there's no suspect test about sleep or anything so don't go in my comments and be like oh my god classic counsel I'm just gonna ban you I'm just gonna ban you if you leave a scrub ass comment like that and you want to rage because this is a competitive channel you need to have, hit a good level of you know ability and play no scrub no scrub comments all right anyways Point is, let me know in the comments below what you think. I do think this is pretty interesting. Um, and yeah, definitely curious to hear what you guys think. I'm going to be doing a tournament stream later. I made it to the finals recently of this $1,000 tournament. I think you guys will enjoy seeing some of that content. So we're going to be doing a little stream watch together later tonight, the way Joe does with his draft league. So tap in for that. See y'all soon. Peace.